I mean, I think as leftists, we should be mindful that humanitarian intervention has always has often been used as a pretext to bomb sovereign countries and to actually implement, uh, you know, uh, ulterior uh, said policies. The, said the American uh, this isolationist is, in 1939. Yes, I know. No, I'm not just talking about the United States. Clearly. No, but that's what they said. The European powers. They said the same thing. Um, isolationists and fascists have long been allies. Back in World War II, uh, many of the loudest mm -hmm. isolationist voices in the states were fascists who were sympathetic to Hitler's cause and wanted America to keep their hands off so Hitler had a better chance of taking over the whole of Europe, you know? This has been the case in many such conflicts. There have been plenty of leftist isolationists whose real position is that we shouldn't get involved in, like, say, historical conflicts surrounding China or Russia or whatever, or all the hands-off mm -hmm. Syria types who are gleefully rubbing their hands and drooling as they see Assad, like, massacre his own people. Like, I'm very suspicious of isolationists, because it seems like every time isolationism comes up, like, in the left, it's like, here's an example of, like, a genocide America shouldn't have worked to prevent or something. Or, like, here's a genocider that we shouldn't be supporting action against. And, like, I don't know, yeah. like, why? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do tend to, in a... Broadly, I say, I'd say uh, lean uh, to the isolationist direction. There are, of course, I'm not a pacifist. There are cases where any power, even imperial powers, will legitimately marshal military force. I don't believe this was one of those uh, uh, cases. And I would actually be curious. I mean, you were against the 2000, I don't know, like still if you are now, but the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Uh, are you against that still? Yes. So can you tell me, I mean, just if you look at the death toll or say the Kurds gassed, by the Ba'athist party and all those atrocities, what is, like if it had been framed as a humanitarian intervention and you know it was a democratic administration that launched it, would you still have been opposed? Or like, what is the difference? Oh, there's view? a context in which I would have supported the Iraq war. It just wasn't the one that happened. If there was some kind of like very disciplined, like action plan, like, okay, in and out, these are the good guys, these are the mm -hmm. bad guys, good guys are gonna be in charge. All right, let's go, kabamo, you know? Um, then I think that would have been acceptable. Also, if there was a kind of ethnic separatist tension, like um, some kind of like Kurdistan like type situation, you know, if we if they were being like cold, like border to border, um, and our intervention was framed in such a way, like I think that would be acceptable. Um, of course, that wasn't what happened. You know, obviously, like the whole Iraq invasion was like entirely supported by lies and incompetence, like the whole way through, and there was not like nothing, nothing at all there. But in the Kosovo situation, it was pretty upfront and direct, right? Like. You have you already have a legally and ethnically autonomous region, uh, Kosovo, that's currently in the process of being sort of reduced to a to a soup by Serbian police forces, and all we really have to do is like get go in there, knock Serbia the fuck off, and um, sort of ensure Kosovar independence through um, through military force. And we were able to get that done in like no time at all, right? How long did the bombings take place? 78 days, 79 yeah. days. That's, uh, that's yeah. pretty but, I mean, quick by like military intervention standards, like two and a half months. That's pretty okay, I'd say. Yeah, well, I mean, um, it's the effect of the bombing, right? I mean, we already went over how it destroyed the infrastructure. Hey, hey, uh, well, guess what was happening economy. to Kosovo? I'm not, I'm not yeah. shedding tears over Serbia. If they didn't want to be bombed, then they could have not done the ethnic cleansing or ceded to NATO's demands to occupy the Kosovo region. Um, and ensure its independence. But they didn't. They fucked up on every level. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. I just think there's a bit of a double standard. I don't think you'd be willing to apply that standard consistently to other cases in the way that you're framing uh, the counterinsurgency and the insurgency uh, in Kosovo. I think I could be pretty consistent. Mid-1990s and 1999. Well, I mean, I mean, there's other cases like Sri Lanka, like Ukraine, where you had similar metrics in terms of the I don't know. Well, so outcomes. hold on. Ukraine is not remotely comparable for reasons I've already described. I don't know enough about Sri Lanka to really say. Uh, maybe I would agree with Sri Lanka, um, but I'm not anti-interventionist. Uh, I'm anti-imperialist. Um, any foreign action on our part will constitute a kind of imperialism, but I think that there are legitimate pretexts for military intervention. I think there are quite a few, to be honest with you. Look what's happening right now with Armenia and um, uh, Azerbaijan. They want, well, at least Armenia wants, Russia to come in. Uh, but Russia can mm -hmm. because they're broke as shit. Um, but if America could come in, well, maybe some Armenian people could be protected. Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, you know, Tajikistan attacked Kyrgyzstan. If that turns into a full invasion, d does America have the right to go on, send, I don't know, troops or whatever to go intervene? Realistically, we can't do this. There's no political capital and we wouldn't really benefit from it that much anyway. It's not adjacent to Europe. You know, there's reasons why we won't. But theoretically, like, could we do that and be the, the good guys? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so in principle, you would have also then, given the right conditions, supported the invasion of Iraq in 2003, just if it wasn't done through lies and there was 
more competence in terms of the uh, the bombing campaign and the invasion and the bombing of Libya is also something well, the you could potentially get behind. The conditions are critical, right? Like the, the conditions involved are going to determine my support of, 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 of any kind, right? Um, if there mm -hmm. were, if there was a reasonable way that we could have intervened in Iraq and established a somewhat stable other government that was less destructive um, than the Ba'athist party, uh, and and just and just sort of like we could have been reasonably sure that like things would be okay over there after we walked out. Um, then yeah, I, I think that would have been a good thing to do because Saddam Hussein was pretty fucking bad. The problem is like that can't really happen in Iraq because there wasn't really like any challenge to Baathist rule. Um, whereas like the Kosovo Serbia thing was p practically right in our back door, and it's like really small and contained. Like we could have we 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 could keep Kosovo um, separate and safe like we we did have that power like we you know we could ensure that i think um yeah. but stuff goes wrong sometimes too i mean obviously nobody's happy with how libya went down so yeah yeah i mean i think there was a cost to the kosovo intervention and certainly you know the two hundred thousand serbs and the roma who fled i mean it just wasn't done properly and uh the kla i mean it was on it was their mandate was well known and you know sidelighting rogova working with the kla arming the kla or training the kla at least before the bombing and then scuttling diplomatic solutions to the bombing which devastated a semi-modernized european country uh is, is a problem and i think that Do you was think there's anything weird at all about the way you loaded all of that and all of this is like overshadowed by the 1.4 million displaced by the ethnic cleansing done by the serbian police forces like the way you framed all of that, you can attribute mm -hmm. at most a few thousand people dead due to the KLA. Um, most of the people who were, um, uh, most of the Serbs or um, uh, Roma who were displaced in Kosovo, their displacement took place by the Serbian police forces. Um, I mean, it's not as though Serbs are ethnically immune to the bombs being fired by Serbs, right? Like the, the Serbs and, and, and um, Roma displaced within Kosovo were largely done so by the Serbs. Um, and and what's more, like again, you attribute maybe a thousand or two thousand deaths at most to NATO intervention. All of this is phenomenally overshadowed by the deaths and displacements caused by the Serbian police forces. But you don't lend that event the same like rhetorical weight when you talk about it. Like you don't when you do your run through on all the bad things that happen, like that escapes mm -hmm. your notice. It doesn't like that makes me very suspicious because this is often the language that I see from propagandists, you know. Um, well, who, no. will, who will cultivate like the way they frame a series of events to maximize the rhetorical impact of a bunch of minor things. And then like the major thing that started all of it is like, oh, well, you know, and, and, and always it's like, well, that wouldn't have happened if X or Y or Z. But I mean, the Serbs did it and it was the worst thing by far that happened. And the Serbs rejected reasonable diplomatic demands. So, you know, it seems like they kind of brought it on themselves. I think the Serbian government's more responsible for the death of their own people at the hands of the NATO bombings than NATO is, considering we offered them diplomatic outs for the sh bad shit they were doing. Um, you know, kind of like how Japan would have been on the hook for their civilians dying if they had not surrendered after the bombs and we had killed a bunch of Japanese civilians on our way to invading Tokyo. Okay. I mean, I... I disagree with some of the way you loaded that up as well like you understand the complaints you're making about me i could also make about you in terms of how you frame the nato intervention even in the last uh, discussion i guess we, we just have a fundamental disagreement uh, about that i mean I, and i think the breakup of the yugoslav federation is highly complicated it had to do with economic as well as nationalist and political reasons especially with the debt crisis and after the uh, fall of the soviet union uh, all of these played a role in the uh, fissures uh, you know in the republics and then it was exacerbated i think by uh, at best misguided intervention by the powers specifically germany i'm not even including the united states uh, here and so to say that you know serbia was responsible for a lot of this uh, uh, bloodshed, I think, is a uh, you know problematic. There was a well, lot of blame to go my around. My accusation. The other well, well, but no, this is exactly what I mean. I was accusing you of denying them agency. The Serbs were the ones who swept through the coast of our countryside, displacing and killing hundreds of thousands of people. This is what I mean. Like you're like, okay, I'm not denying them agency, but due to complicated geopolitical factors beforehand, I think that laying like all the blame at the foot. Like, no, I will. They did it. <laughs> they did the thing. It's not like it's not like World War One and Great Depression Germany wasn't complicated, but like you can't. At the end of the day, like 
who who did the ethnic cleansing? Like, it was them. They did it willfully. It wasn't an accident. They swept through the countryside. There's not that much more to say about it. The complexity in okay. this case just feels like obfuscation. Like, it's just... We, so just to be clear, I was to... talking about just the breakup of the Republic, not about what happened in the countryside. And I will say, I did say that they well, deserve primary responsibility for what happened. Uh, okay, uh, I, I mean, I don't care if the Serbs are responsible for the breakup. That was pretty much inevitable with Tito dead in the Cold War over science. You know, some, some, I don't, well, I don't, there are things, well, yeah, we don't want to go down that rabbit hole. There's other things that could, I think could have been done, but it's, it doesn't matter. It's moot now. Uh, but as I long do, as we I agree that, that they... Serbians are genetically evil, you know, that's the, <laughs> sort of the core of the, 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 the principle. Uh, I don't know. You know, I remember watching a debate you had with AJW and you said something like at that time, America's a great country if we just stop bombing all these other countries. And you said Libya, Syria, you seem to have changed a bit since then. Like, would you say you've gone through a political evolution with respect to foreign policy? Um, in part, well, the Libya thing still fucked up. Um, I think like taking a look at some of the missiles that were struck, the, the issue is that like there's a difference between like the, the long stroke and the short stroke when it comes to a lot of these geopolitical uh, intentions. When it comes to the Syria thing, like I real I like I man, et, listen, OK, any supporter of Assad over there who gets murked by our missiles. OK, that's listen, God needs uh, fuel for the engine. All right. Holy fuck. Assad is such a piece of shit. Um, I, I guess the, the problem is that like there's no such thing as letting countries all over the world do their own thing. It's, you only like get to choose which bigger countries fuck with them. That's the problem, right? I guess this is kind of like the tiny bit, like the nugget of truth that I'm pulling from the um, from the, uh, the the like realist school of geopolitics for whatever like fucking degenerate inbred bullshit they're spitting like 98% of the time. Um, I do I, I don't think there's like in, like real national independence, you know. Um, Latin America has a heavy bent towards China and Russia in large part because we like fucked them up so badly. Uh, over the course of hundreds of years. Um, but there's like no one anywhere is independent. There are no independent countries, right? So like we leave Syria alone, then who gets in charge of Syria? Well, Russia does, but Russia's way worse than we are. So should we be in charge of Syria? I don't fucking know. Maybe we should like at least keep the Russians from being in charge of Syria. I don't really know. Like, I don't know if there are necessarily good answers to any of this stuff, but I think, um, I think it's I think it's pretty clear to understand or like draw a line between the conflicts we get ourselves involved in that are completely indefensible and ones that might have had like legitimate pretext. I don't know. Okay, but I mean, it sounds like a lot of the ones you're just supporting now, like Syria, Libya. I don't know. Actually, do you see the NATO bombing of Libya? If you fully nah, support li li it, Libya went um, to yeah. shit. Libya went to shit. It's yeah, it's complicated. Okay. All right. I mean, do you, yeah, I guess I've said, I think covered what I wanted to say. If you have any questions, other questions for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Though? It. It's, it's like, there's no, like I used to believe like America should just keep their hands off these countries and leave them alone. But all that means is that some that. other country gets to rape them. Like that doesn't, it, it like it, being like, it's, it's that abstainious thing, you know? And then like the people who are the most vocal supporters of isolationism here in the States are the fascists, right? Like the far right, the MAGA movement has like the loudest group of so-called anti-interventionists. And a lot of that is because they don't want us to get involved in the conflicts that other authoritarians around the world have their hands on, you know? Um, I don't think America makes a good world policeman or whatever, but if I had to choose like which, like right now today, if we could like turn back time and make it so that Assad got deposed back in like, I don't know, like 88 or whatever, and it's been basically like um, like like America's had their hand on Syria since. Would that have been better or worse than the world we're in today? And I honestly feel like it would have been better. It still would have been bad, but it would have been better. And I think part of like my changing perspective has been like you have to be mature enough to accept that sometimes the best option still makes you feel like shit afterwards. I don't know.